Hello, welcome to session number 19 in the series Analog Circuit Design using ADS. This is Anurag Nigam. Uh, I'm just going to conclude on uh, the device uh, that's a BJT, and uh, then I'm going to go into some circuit design using BJTs. Right, so uh, the topic of today I'm going to talk about is a high frequency or rather the, the unilateral current gain and the maximum frequency of operation and maximum oscillation frequency so I'm going to talk about unilateral current gain unilateral current gain and I'm going to talk about so let me first decide uh, let me first define what is a unilateral current gain okay uh, this is a current gain so so this is a current gain uh, with okay so the unilateral current gain is defined as uh, current gain uh, with output short circuited that's how you will get a current gain right and the feedback from output to input is is not there so basically any resistive feedback and uh, there is no feedback between output and input okay and maximum frequency of operation FT FT maximum frequency of operation okay so this FT is designed is defined as uh, frequency at which so just one second frequency at which unilateral current gain becomes zero uh, sorry becomes one frequency at which uni lateral current gain is 1 ok so let's consider first the bipolar and then I'll go to also MOS the similar treatment ok so R pi I'm going to remove because it's a unilateral gain I'm just going to leave behind you C mu and C mu is also short circuited because it's not going to provide you a feedback because the output is short circuited let me draw this again okay so okay so what I'm gonna have is okay you have a GM and this is CGD and then So this one is going to be okay. So I'm looking at sorry, I'm looking at uh, bipolar. So this will be C mu, and this is going to be C pi. C pi, and then there is going to be one R pi, and there is going to be a plus minus voltage V i, and then there is a current 
which I put into the circuit which is I I correct and right okay and I am going to have the output shorted so there will be a R output resistance RO and this is going to be of course there will be C CCA there will be a capacitance here which will be CCB correct and then this is output is shorted so when you do that this C mu will come in parallel with C pi right C mu will come in parallel with C pi now if I take the current I and if I want to find the current through R pi that will be 1 divided by S C pi plus C mu right divided by okay so divided by R pi plus 1 over S C pi plus C mu right so this will be the current and then if I multiply this with R pi then I am going to get the voltage V i and if I multiply this this with so now these two are short circuited right so this and this are short circuited so the current which flows in is this gm times of vi okay so if I multiply this with gm I'm going to get the current io so io by ii now io and ii are functions of a small signal right so it is a function of s right so this would be equal to gm r pi right divided by so this will be 1 plus r pi times of s times of c pi plus c mu so so this will be the value of this will be the value of okay so yes so this is my uh, gain and this gain has to become 1 okay so okay so this gain will become 1 for this FT so I have to replace S with uh, the uh, frequency right so it will be Omega so this thing has to become omega t right so now I have omega t is equal to gm r pi divided by and I'm assuming r pi into c, c pi c mu is a large quantity greater than 1 let's say so then I'm left with r pi c pi plus c mu and this r pi would cancel out so i'll be left with this and 1 over omega t is going to be the time constant tau which is going to be c pi plus c mu divided by gm okay now one more thing is there c pi is c b plus c j e plus c mu then divided by gm and cb is equal to tau f gm so i have tau is equal to tau f plus cje plus c mu by gm so what it means it means that this is the major factor in bringing down the uh the unit the, the ft okay maximum operating frequency ft so base transit time is has to be less for ft to be high right now okay to f is equal to wb square of twice of dn okay fine and okay so let's write this again 1 over 2 pi of ft 
is equal to gm over uh, cb plus c mu that's what we had now f no sorry okay 2 pi ft so ft would be equal to 1 over 2 pi gm over cb plus c mu now let's see what happens with ft versus ic that's a very famous stuff okay so let's assume this to be like this and on x-axis i'm going to have ic and i'm going to have ft on the left axis so we know at low values of ic gm is going to be less right and as ic goes up gft is going to build up because gm builds up and then suddenly this is going to go down because there is a kirk effect so here the kirk effect kicks in kirk effect kicks in and ft drops effect okay so kirk effect kicks in and ft drops down so over here you see that ft is a function of ic so when you bias a transistor and you want to operate at a certain frequency you cannot just have a very low current density for high gain you would have to have a sufficient current density to support ft now this is for a bipolar transistor next is uh, there is one more thing which is called maximum oscillation frequency so this one is important this is important for for your amplifiers and all that for oscillators we are looking at maximum oscillation frequency which has a relationship you can derive that 8 times of pi times of uh, in this case is going to be rb okay which will be the, the resistance in the base so there will be additional resistance which i will introduce here which will be rb okay rb times of cgd or c c mu sorry yeah c mu right am i right let me just check this to collect uh, yeah c mu okay so that will be the maximum oscillation frequency this the figure is more important for oscillators and this figure is more important for amplifiers so that's that okay so now we know that uh, high frequency response depends on the base transit time here so we have to reduce the base transit time we have to reduce the base transit time to have a higher ft of the device now let's look at the same stuff in case of a in case of a mosfet right so in case of a mosfet you have over here cgd oh come on so you have CGD over here and over here you have got CGS and here it will be GM okay now there is no resistance I'm considering here in case of bipolar you have got R pi which was beta 0 by GM right okay here you are going to have an entire G2 here or in this case GDS and then you are going to have C, uh, CDB but then this is all shorted out right this is all shorted out so and then here you have got current which you put in I in okay so now this is going to be much more simpler because the voltage VI is equal to 1 over cgs plus cgd times of s okay 
uh, times of i i and then the output i o would be equal to g m times of i i uh, divided by s c g s plus c g d okay and then i o by i i would be equal to g m divided by s c g s plus c g d is equal to 1 so omega t would be equal to g m divided by c g s plus c g d correct and f t would be equal to 1 over 2 pi times of g m by c g s plus c g d correct and time period tau L is equal to c g s by g m plus c g d by g m okay so this covers the uh, f t for a uh, for a mouse device so this is a ft for a mouse device so let's mark this this is your bjt this is your bjt and this one is your fet and second thing i'm going to write is f max is the same stuff f max is equal to root of ft divided by 8 pi of Again, I will introduce here uh, a resistance here, small resistance here, which is R B R G. Sorry, so this will be C G D times of R G. Okay, so this would be in the case of a MOSFET or a FET. Okay, so I have covered the F T and F max for both MOSFET and B J T. Now let's go to the the whole business of why did I study a bipolar. So my first requirement from a bipolar is a temperature compensated bias circuit, right? So how do I make a temperature compensated bias circuit? Okay. So first of all, I'm going to tell you what is a proportional to absolute temperature. So I will say proportional to absolute temperature current. Okay, so this is called PTET. Sorry. So this is called PTET. Okay, and this is going to be a current source. PTET current source. Now, what that is, let it have a 1 is to 1 current meter. Right? So over here, you have uh, this thing, and then here you put in here two transistors two bipolars sorry In one bipolar, you put here a resistance R. Okay, let's say this is area A1, this is area A2, and this is coupled like that. Now, I'm assuming the beta of the device is very large, so the current flowing here is same as the current flowing here, but the current basically, you know, is also going to flow into these gates, uh, sorry, these bases, right? So this current can flow into base. But I'm assuming that the beta is so large that these two currents are same okay and let's call that as ip that 
okay so now I know that IP tat for transistor A is going to be equal to what IC is equal to okay so what I'm going to have here is VBE 1 and here I'm going to have VBE 2 and the relationship of IC okay so let's just write down the relationship of IC IC just one second okay IC is equal to QA so for transistor 1 IC 1 QA DN N I square over N A W B and N A W B is N I square these are all process related D N is process Q is charge on electrons so nothing over here is important okay okay so I see for transistor 1 is QA1 DN and I square let me see if I'm recording okay I'm recording fine and I square e raised to VBE1 by VT correct and IC2 is going to be equal to QA2 uh, DN and I square over N A W B E raised to V B two divided by V T. Correct? So now from first equation I'll get V B one. That will be equal to I C divided by this number. Okay. So I will say Q A so I'll separate out A one. So later on you will see why I'm doing that. Q A A D N and I square so this will come in the denominator right okay and I square QAD and N I square over N A W B times of a1 okay this whole thing has to be a log okay so this whole thing has to be a log and then it has to be multiplied by VT so this will be equal to VBE1 right and similarly similarly VBE2 will be equal to VT ln of IC so it will be IC2 divided by QA now A I'll separate out DN N I square over N A W B times of A2 right and then this I C1 is equal to I C2 equal to I P tat correct now what I'll have is if I have the relationship would be Kirchhoff's law on the gate IB1 is equal to VBE1 equal to VBE2 plus VT isn't it right uh, sorry plus I IP tat R sorry plus IP tat times of R now uh, this condition is also true for two conditions okay one condition is IP tat equal to zero so this is one stable state okay IP tat equal to zero is a stable state now what I can do is I can say VBE1 minus VBE2 is equal to IP tat R or I can say 1 by R of that equal to IP tat right now this is a log log minus log will be a division right so in this case VT will come common outside VT over R and this will be ln of what would remain 
is going to be a2 by a1. Am I right? Rest will cancel out. It's going to be equal to IP that. Okay, so now why am I saying it is IP that? Because it is proportional to absolute temperature. How? Because there is a KB O into T divided by Q ln of A2 by A1 times of T. So this factor times of T is IP tet. So if I was to plot IP tet versus temperature, right, so if I was to plot IP tet versus temperature, so on this axis I have temperature and this is IP tet. Okay, so this is going to be of course, if I have T equal to 0, which is now this T is in Kelvin, right? So make sure it is in Kelvin. So if I was to plot this in Kelvin, so if I start with a 0 Kelvin, it is going to do this. Where this slope, okay, sorry, where this slope has a value of KB over Q r ln a2 by a1 now i have got two controlling factors here i can choose the ratio a2 by a1 is going to decide the log of this is going to decide the slope or i can say 1 over r that's going to decide the slope of this curve so this is going to be a pro proportional to absolute temperature proportional to absolute temperature current source right now if i want I can just take another transistor out of here which is going to be a MOS so inside there is a current mirror right which a 1 is to 1 okay so this current if I have the same size as output stage here and output stage here then this current let me just make a clear one so this current Okay, this current is going to be IP that. Okay, now, so there is one stable state which is over here, and the other stable state condition is this. So, to avoid this stable condition, this condition which is undesirable, what will I do? I will put here. Uh, a transistor from the supply which is going to be a PMOS and sorry okay so I will put here a capacitor on the input right and this would draw initially the capacitor is going to have a zero volt so let's say this comes from the supply okay so initially this uh, this capacitor would be uh, zero volts and that means that this device uh, is going to be so this is a startup device so this is startup device is going to be on and that means that if I initially pull out the current from here okay so this will be the startup circuit okay so once the capacitor gets charged then this device turns off okay so this device will turn off when the capacitor gets charged and then this circuit is on its own so I have avoided a, a situation of IP tet equal to zero so IP tet equal to zero is a stable state which has to be avoided for that you are supposed to have a startup circuit like this okay another thing which is of concern is that the current over here okay so the current over here is going to have certain base current so the two currents will not be equal so in that case I can put here uh, a transistor like this and this would be called a beta helper so basically whatever is the base current IB1 plus IB2 okay that would be divided by beta which is 
100 roughly so this current drawn here would be much smaller so then this current would become equal to this current right two branch currents would be same so I would have a beta helper here so this is a beta current source right so I can design a beta current source but let me see how much time I have spent okay so I can go ahead and design a beta current source so just one second okay so I am going to put here a new uh, new folder and I will call this as bias circuits bias okay C I R C U I T S okay bias circuits and here I'm going to create a new schematic a schematic and call it as PTAT right now this PTAT I want to put the output impedances I don't want them to play any part so what I'll do is I'm going to put here uh, what you call a wide swing cascode right so I will quickly design a wide swing cascode here okay so I'll quickly design a wide swing cascode so for, for that let me borrow a transistor from somewhere PMOS device so under gain stages I would have a PMOS device isn't it oh I have a wide swing already isn't it okay so I'll just take use this one okay so just one second I need this device I need this devices and I need this current source hmm. do I need a current source no I need to just be equal right so it doesn't matter so I'm gonna copy these devices edit copy sorry edit copy edit copy and then I'm gonna go here and say edit paste okay before I paste this I'm gonna flip it uh, mirror this this way okay escape adjust the adjust the text so I'm gonna take these two texts and say F5 they are over here then I'm gonna take these two texts say F5 they are over here and then this one I'm gonna say F5 it's over here and hmm So maybe I don't need this device. Okay, so I'll do a telescopic cascode. Okay, so I'm gonna combine this with this, this with this, this with that. So this is a one is to ten ratio. Do I need one is to ten ratio? I need one is to one ratio, right? So that's okay. I'll make all of them as twenty. one is to one ratio right okay fine so I'm gonna make all of them is 20 20 and 20 okay so this will have a sufficiently high output impedance okay so next is I'm going to have a BJT or HBT right so I will take a NP and HPT I just don't want to do any typing so I'll take a NPN from here so I'll pick up this one edit copy and edit paste 
okay so one goes over here and then I'm gonna flip it like this and one goes over here and I'm going to do a F5 on this one okay so here let me do 2.5 there's no reason for this but let's say 2.5 into 2 so 2.5 micron there are two fingers and then I'm gonna have 2.5 into 80 fingers 2.5 into 80 fingers so more the number of fingers lower the base resistance that's why I have 2.5 into 80 okay so this is done then I am going to just put in a beta helper here so this will go here and let's say this goes here and I am going to put here a beta helper rather just one second this would go to ground I don't want to take it to so this would go to ground okay so let me put here a resistor which is 55 ohm roughly 55 or 50 ohm well that would decide the slope so we will vary that and see the effect right so let's put here initial value of sources glum components let's put here 55 ohm and then I'm just gonna combine this this over here like this this over here like this this goes here and then I have the this thing so one over here one over here okay now I'm gonna put in a beta helper here right so this is my supply right so I'm gonna just take this transistor and use the same size as a beta helper so let's just flip it so that's my beta helper right and like this like this and this is grounded this is going to be grounded as a beta helper and this is going to be DD right so okay so that's the beta helper and I'm going to put in a 2.4 volts here right okay so let me put here 2.4 volt supply right and uh, okay so let me put here a 2.4 volt supply sources frequency domain okay so let's put here a 3 volt supply there's too many in the so let's put in here a 3 volt supply right so this is 3 volts and one more thing I want to do is I don't want this to be just 55 I want to have different values right so how would I declare different values here I don't want to use tune is there a way okay yeah I will sweep it right so that's okay doesn't matter okay and then I want to have here a what is called a startup circuit okay and first of all one more thing I forgot was this guy is diode connected right okay so I am going to go ahead and repeat this one so that I am scaling the same current so sorry so I am going to repeat this one so I am scaling the same current to the output and this one comes from sorry this is not going to be diode connected right 
so escape delete this connection this is just a mirror right so I'm going to mirror from that point so that's the mirror and that's the mirror correct so I'm mirroring out the IP tat okay and here I'm going to put in some voltage and measure IP tat so I'll go to probe components and I that's kind of strange I'll rotate this and this is going to be IP tat and I'm going to put in certain voltage here let's say I'm going to put here 1.2 volts or 1 volt or whatever because the output impedance is large so it will not matter 1.2 volt right and here okay so this is the thing and then I have to add a startup circuit so I need a PMOS so let's pick up one of the PMOSes right and here I need two and that will be a good size to draw some current out of the out of this branch okay so this is going to start up the circuit and I want a capacitor and uh, this capacitor can be one pick of red if you want right one pick of red is good enough so lump components and I'm going to put here one pick of red okay and this is going to charge from the supply and once it's fully charged startup curve it will disconnect from the the PTET source okay so now this one I'll name as PTET right and then I am going to put in the include file right so let's go here and get the library include file mm, where's the include file going to be under lib files let's say include file okay another thing is I'm going to sweep the DC so I'm going to sweep the temperature okay so okay so I'm going to do a DC but I have to sweep the temperature right so here let me put here simulation DC in here if I want I can sweep the temperature here so this is a inbuilt thing here temperature and I'm going to go from minus uh, 42 plus 85 that's a commercial range minus 42 plus 85 in steps of 1 is ok and say apply and say ok now it sh can be the device temperature so just one second ok so now I can sweep the temperature over here minus 42 plus 85 and I'm going to display variable sweep start stop step ok so I'm going from minus 40 to plus 85 and this another thing is I'm going to put in here parameter sweep so I'm going to sweep one of the parameters in here right so that will be R rs right and this I will go from 25 to 55 so I'll go that resistance I'm going to sweep from 25 to 55 in steps of 5 55 in steps of 5 right so I have 7 of these and then this is going to have an inner sweep in DC1 DC1 right 
and then I am also going to do the following that this one is RS and RS is a variable so I have to declare a variable RS also and that variable let's say is 50 ohm so this is RS which is 50 ohm to start with the default value can be 50 okay so I am going to sweep temperature from minus 40 to plus 85 and I'm also going to sweep as an outer loop from 25 to 55 in steps of 5 and I'm going to hit simulate and here I have IP tat as a function of temperature and each one has got a different value of R so if I want I can label that so if I go here to label okay so this one is this one is the highest slope this is 25 this is 30 this is 35 this is 40 45 50 55 and this is proportional to okay proportional to uh, temperature so this temperature is in Celsius this is not in Kelvin so if I want to do a minus 273 these all these graphs should meet at a point which will be zero okay so now here this is a P tat current source proportional to absolute temperature so uh, now I can do okay so now uh, this is with temperature it is increasing now I want to look at what is a C tat voltage reference right so okay so what I'll do is I'll generate another schematic and take a certain size right and then see what happens okay so I'm going to generate so this was about P tat now I'm going to just cancel this over here and cancel this over here okay so this one you understood now if I was to use a, a transistor okay so I'm now going to talk about C tat complementary to C tat which is complementary C O M P L E M E N T A R Y complementary to so that is T absolute temperature okay so I'm expecting that its response is going to be the reverse right so if I was to take a transistor okay so let's consider a bipolar transistor like this and if I was to do a, di a diode connection like this on a bipolar transistor and if I was to force some current here then this voltage okay would be would be a, a C tat right so let me just draw it here so okay so I would like to plot its response okay now as a scientist you can do lots of calculations and this and that but that's the difference between a scientist and an engineer okay I'll just explain you what's going on here okay its response would be something like this this is this is going to be the reverse of what P tat it is so its response is C tat response is going to be like this now notice that this gap sorry notice that this gap this gap is more this gap is less so what does this mean it means that I can take advantage of this how if I put in a resistance in here right so if I was to put in a resistance in here so let's say this is RD that would cause these curves to split out so they will go up so let me just shrink this let's explain you what I mean okay so 
so this can only size it okay fine that doesn't matter uh, what's going on here okay so let me do one more thing if that's not possible I will take this one and I will shift this one down bear with me and then this one I will shift down so that I have more space and then I will take these and I will shift them down so I have more space now if I put in here a resistance like RD that RD is going to do the following okay so it's going to take up every point up right so it is going to do something like every point has gone up but I can have a sufficient value of R such that I have these three curves separate out like this so when these three curves separate out like this then notice this that this point comes in line with that so this is how I size R sorry so if I size R such a way that these two curves or two curves have their starting and end points come together right so that's what I'm trying to do so so what have I plotted here let me just repeat that what I have plotted here is V C E right now I am doing V C E plus I R V C E plus I R now what are these three different curves I have got I R 1 to I R 2 to I R 3 correct so what have I done I have sized R D such that these curves basically are going to the uh, start point and end point is going to meet together okay at the same value of voltage across it so the net voltage across here would be a constant that's the whole idea okay so the whole idea is that next net voltage across this combination should be independent of temperature and that's what I'm going to do okay so IR1 and IR2 will be two points on here IR1 and IR2 right and then that basically C tat response is this way and if I scale RD properly then I would have uh, a voltage across this combination to be constant so you understood how this design is done for this design I have just seen the C tat characteristics I have scaled RD so that I get this response which is over here and then I have R1 and R3 sorry R1 and R3 right so R3 so I have these two points R1 and R3 okay so basically IR1 and IR3 on this curve so a combination of P tat and C tat would give you a constant voltage independent of temperature that will be proportional to band gap so this is how I am going to design a, a band gap circuit so a band gap that will be a combination of P tat plus C tat okay so let's very quickly do some investigation on CTAT let me see if I'm recording okay so I have to finish this in five ten minutes so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to make here a new schematic and I will call this as CTAT okay C not cat it's not cat it is CTAT okay okay so I the way to design it is properly is to select two points on P tat and then accordingly design a C tat okay 
so what is this doing over here right so let's say pick up a transistor from p tat only and use it as a c tat okay which transistor should i pick this one right say copy okay so i'm gonna have here say paste right and instead of 80 i'm gonna have just eight right and then i am just going to put here a uh, ground for the body connection and uh, then i'm going to diode connect this one right so i'm going to diode connect this one so this is the diode connection connect this to ground correct and uh, I when you do okay so this is there and then I'm going to choose I'm going to choose to force a current here IRF okay so go to sources frequency domain sources sorry frequency domain sources right and I'm going to put here IRF So this would be IRF in milliamperes, right? And here I'm going to use a three point. Well, this supply doesn't make any difference here because this has no meaning because this is a current source, right? So this supply has no meaning, but I'm just putting it there. Okay, let's make a copy of this. Okay, which will represent a a current mirror so one is to one ratio okay now I am going to take the same device and put in here a certain resistance okay so go here and here I'm going to connect this one here and here I'm going to put here certain resistance RD okay so I am going to go here to sources LAM components and I'm going to put here a certain resistance RD okay okay delete this one okay so this is RD RD okay so I don't know RD so let's put here a variable uh, var and call this RD as 50 ohm RD as 50 ohm equal to 50 ohm so this is the initial value I'm not sure what this value is correct and then I am going to make IRF go from 1 to 2 so basically if I look at my C tat response or P tat response, I'm going from roughly, let's say I'm going from 1 to 2. So this has to be sized to a bigger number, right? I want to go from 1 to 2. So basically, what I'm trying to say is I'm going to choose this range and I'm going to use, I'm going to have some value of R adjusted so that this thing is desirable this is what I desire okay I desire this to go from 1 to 2 over the range minus 40 to 80 okay so this is my desired so that RS is 55 but I can have a I can scale a2 by a1 and R, RS such that I will get this this slope right so 1 to 2 so I'm going to choose IRF to go from 1 to 2 and then uh, in DC I'm going to sweep the temperature so in DC I'm going from minus 40 so I'm going to sweep the temperature temperature from minus 40 to plus 85 minus 40 to plus 85 85 right in steps of 1 126 points okay so here let me just make this visible see war start stop step 
okay so this is temperature sweep and then I'm going to do a parameter sweep here I'm going to sweep IREF IREF I'm going to sweep so I'm showing you the exact design how I would do it okay uh, you can as an engineer you are not supposed to do this but uh, do write lots of elaborate formula and then those formulas are going to flail when you do simulations so it's not that uh, you should not do simulation I'm not promoting that I'm just saying that engineers are not supposed to do lengthy calculations they are supposed to use their intuition to make the things work and that intuition comes from the theory so a scientist applies directly the theory to get the result uh, engineer applies intuition to get the result okay so it's a basically inference thing so I am going to go this from 1 to 2 milliamperes 2 milliamperes in steps of any step you choose 0 0.001 that's good enough right so how many points thousand points is okay so I am going to choose huh no I want only three points e 1 to 2 point 0.5 so I want only three curves right because I'm just going to look at and mid points and points and midpoint right so three points I'm going to look at and this is going to have the inner sweep in DC1 DC1 sorry I did a mistake here typing wrong place this is going to be DC1 okay so now I'm ready for simulations I am going to put here the study the include file that's the include file I put here so I'm ready for the simulation and I need to know this voltage VO and VO VO so I I will name this as VO and I wanted to show you how you size RD so this is VO and this is VO1 okay so remember VO basically in my drawing VO is the black thing that's what a transistor is going to do and VO one is the blue thing which I want the transistor to do along with this RD okay so that's the whole idea so here I'm ready for simulations so let's see where is it stuck and okay so let's hit simulate button okay uh, IRF is not defined so le let's put here IRF is 1 IRF is going to be equal to 1 add okay so now there will be no problem hit simulate okay once it's done I'm going to plot VO so VO is doing what it's supposed to be doing right okay VO is doing what it is supposed to be doing but I have VO 1 which is what is desired to do so now you would see that this point I'll put a marker here this point and I'll put a marker here these two points should come to same voltage so this is now 0.96 and this is 0.868 so what I'll do is I'll put here a tune on RD okay so that's a tune on RD I'm not going to put anything else so now here I am going to have this as 200 sorry typing mistake 200 okay so now I'm going to increase this this is not what I want to see I want to see not this one I want to see this one okay I want these two points which you are 0.96 and 0.868 to come together so I will keep increasing them and keep an eye on the 1.013 and 0.96 so it's still not matched okay keep increasing keep increasing they are almost there they are there so the value of RD is 140 okay so the value of RD is 140 I'm going to update schematic and close 
so now you see that this two points have come together v o one is one point zero five and this is one point zero five so now this is the desired value of of r d now i'm going to put p tat and c tat together and remember that i have to now scale r s because what was desired of r s is from one to two ampere two milliamperes right okay so let me see if i'm recording okay so what do i have here i have a p tat here and a c tat here and i'm i know the ballpark here is 42 and ballpark here is 140 which i placed here the two resistors and then I'm um, tuning them so as to get the flat response. Okay, so this is very sensitive. Okay, so this has become more like a p-tet. So this has to be brought down a little. Okay. Okay, so here I'm going to put here one ohm. Okay, let's see this. Okay, one ohm is going to do this much of difference. Okay, and this one here is also one ohm. Let's get rid of this one. And let's get rid of this point. 155. Okay, so this is there. Or rather 0.5 ohm. So you need trim resistor here, okay? On a process, if you have a way of trimming the resistors, that's what you need. Okay, so here, so this has to be reduced. I want to have a nice sine wave in here. Do you understand what I'm trying to do here? I want to have a nice sine wave in here. So that the excursion can be minimized. I'll play one more time. Yeah, something similar is okay. Let me see this point. No. Okay, something like this. Okay, so now over a temperature of over a temperature range, let's put here a marker. And let's put here a marker. Okay, and so this is 1.193, so let's put 5 digits. Or rather, let's put an auto on this, auto to engineering. Okay, so auto to engineering. And let's put here 5 digits. 5 digits or 6 digits or 7 digits. 7 digits over here and seven digits of over here okay so this one is the maximum variation right over a temperature of minus 42 plus 85 this is the maximum variation so now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to find out what is this difference okay so then i would say uh okay 
temperature coefficient Tc is equal to okay and I'm gonna say m2 minus m1 so I'm gonna have m2 minus m1 right so that value will be the difference in the voltage right so let's put that over here as this and I am going to remove uh, what you call the independent data okay so this is over a 140 degree variation okay and if I look at the absolute value it's going to be that and then I'm going to divide this by so I'm going to divide this by the temperature range so that temperature range is from 85 to minus 40 so it will be 85 minus of minus 40 so that will be plus 40 plus sorry plus 40 okay so that will be the temperature coefficient okay is this seven fourteen parts per million okay so this variation in in band gap voltage over temperature will be fourteen point three parts per million okay fourteen fourteen ppm so I have designed a band gap circuit which gives you a fourteen parts per million variation over minus forty two plus eighty five so this is how you do a temperature compensated bias circuit so I'm going to update this close this and some practical aspect of this band gap the practical aspect is the following okay uh, instead of using a single resistor here you put three or four resistors in parallel and make the combination to be 42.5 so all the temperature all the resistance variations would cancel out similarly do the same for RD and the next tip is that trim these resistors if the trimming is allowed in your process so you can get a band gap which is very good you know temperature coefficient very low temperature coefficients right so this is how you design a C tat P tat and a band gap so uh, I am going to stop here because it's already exceeding one hour I wanted to cover one more topic which is called Brokaw cell uh, which I will do in the next one okay so thanks a lot thank you